Welcome. Let's address the age-old question that drives students and many teachers nuts. Why is negative times negative positive? Uh, let's answer this a couple of ways. But first of all, let's make sure we understand what multiplication is, at least at a very basic level. For example, if I write 5 times 3, that can be thought of as repeated addition, at least at the level of counting numbers. Many mathematicians will disagree with me, but at the very beginning, this can be thought of as five groups of three, so it's three plus three plus three plus three plus three, of course, given the answer 15. What's very curious here, not many people seem to have recognized this as curious, that three times five, which is actually a completely different object, it's three groups of five, actually has the same answer as 15. We're so used to this that we don't question anymore. But there's a lovely geometric understanding of why this would be the case. Why is a times b, whoops, a times b, sure to be the same as b times a, at least for counting numbers? Well, let's have a look at it. Five groups of three. Let's actually count something. Let's draw dots. Here's one group of three dots. Here's a second group of three dots. Here's a third group of three dots. A fourth group of three dots. And finally, a fifth group of three dots. So if I look this way, I am indeed seeing five groups of three, the 15 dots. What's interesting is if I change my perspective and look this way, I'm really seeing this problem, three groups of five. It's the same picture, the same number of dots, therefore the answers must be the same. Of course, it doesn't matter which numbers I use in particular, which counting numbers I use in particular, A times B is sure to be B times A by this geometric uh, representation. All right, so there we go. For at least for positive counting numbers, we know what multiplication means, and we know that multiplication is commutative. Let's start bringing uh, negative numbers into the mix. So let's look at this. Here's a positive number times a negative number. Can I make sense of this? Well, if I think of it as addition, uh, multiplication as repeated addition, it's fine. This is saying five groups of negative three. So here's two of them. Here's a third. Negative three and negative three. That doth negative 15 make. So five groups of negative three, not a problem. Negative 15. Positive times negative, in this case, is negative. Now comes something curious. Well, if I were to ask, for negative 3 times 5. In my model, this technically does not make sense. Negative 3 groups of 5. No idea what that means. Now we have to go, come to a choice. This commutative law, a times b equals b times a. Do we feel so comfortable with this law that we think it should be true for all types of numbers, in particular negative numbers? Most people would answer yes, but I'd like to recognize that really is a choice. If we do say yes, then we can answer this problem. Negative 3 times 5 should be no different from negative, uh, 5 times negative 3, which we already have the answer. It's negative 15. Here it is, the previous problem. So if we choose to believe that numbers are uh, commutative with regard to multiplication, even negative ones, then we can handle negative times positive. Now comes the juicy one. Let's get rid of this. Here it goes. And let's examine now negative times positive. For example, Let's look at negative 3 times negative 5. Well, even if I switch the order around, make this negative 5 times negative 3, I'm still stuck. I do not know which to, what to assign to this. All right, let's go back a step again. Let's look at more complicated multiplication. Let's look at something like 27 times 15. I can think of this really as a geometry problem again. I can say this is, here goes, a rectangle with one side being 27 inches long, another side being 15 inches long, and I'm asking for the area of this rectangle. Well, these numbers 27 and 15 are a tad awkward. Let's split the 15 into two easier numbers, say 10 and 5. And let's also split that 27 into two easier numbers. Let's make it 20 and 7. So that now means my multiplication problems really comes to four smaller problems. What's the area of this piece? This 20 by 10 rectangle? Well, the answer is 200. What's the area of this piece? It's the 20 by 5. Area is 100. Area of this part is 70. And this area of this fourth part is 35. Therefore, I can say the 27 times 15 is the same as 200 plus 100 plus 70 plus 35. I believe that's 405. All right, fabulous. We've just seen that 27 times 15 is 405. If I want, I can be a little sneaky and redo the problem in quite a strange way. I'll still split the, 10, the 15 into 10 and 5, but let's this time split 27 into 30 and negative 3. If we're to believe that the arithmetic of all numbers applies to negative numbers as well, then even though I do not know what a side length of negative 3 inches means, the mathematics behind this diagram we might say is still valid. Alright, 
According to this diagram, what is 27 times 15? Well, this piece is 300, 30 times 10. This piece is 30 times 5, 150. This piece is negative 3 times 10. We can deal with negative times positive. We've just done, done that. That's negative 30. And this piece is negative 15. So this is telling me the answer to 15 times 27 is 300, 450, minus 30, that's 420, minus 15, lo and behold, 405. So answering the problem this way again gives me 405. Now let's be very strange. Let's solve the same problem again a third way. Again, I'll draw a rectangle, but whoops, let's get back to my brush mark here. Draw a rectangle, but instead of doing 27 as 20 plus 7, let's again do it as 30 minus 3, and instead of doing 15 as 10 plus 15, let's do it as 20 and negative 5. Now I've got positive times positive here, no doubt that's 600. Negative 3 times 20, we've dealt with negative times positive, that's negative 60. Negative 5 and 30, we've dealt with that, it's negative 150. But this one, negative 3 times negative 5, that is my mystery question. I know we've been trained to say negative 15, but let's say I want the math to tell me what it should be. Right now, it's a mystery. Well, we know the answer to this problem has to be 405. So right now, we have 600, we have negative 150, we have negative 60, and a mystery number. And, that t and we know the answer must be 405. Can the math tell us what this mystery answer must be? Well, yes. 600 take away 150, that's 450. Take away uh, 60, that is 390 plus something mysterious must be 405. Well, there it is. The math is telling me this mysterious object must be 15. That is positive 15. I am forced to say that negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. In fact, you can use this argument, in fact, any school student can use this argument to justify why any pair of numbers, negative numbers, when multiplied together, must be positive. For example, if you want to show that, uh, I know, negative 4 times negative 8 is positive, I'd probably look at, uh, I know, say, 16 times 22 and think of that two different ways. There we are. Well, let me be a little more mathematical, and for those that want the true mathematical reasons why negative times negative is positive, it's hidden behind the scenes in this argument, let me give it to you. One begins by listing the rules of arithmetic that one thinks should be true. 